James Alan Moore. I write comics. When Alan Moore first came on the scene as a writer, he had a technique in his storytelling to let you know that this was a new beginning. It was death. Death of the character and building the character back up atom by atom was the new beginning, your starting point, which was actually genius. Everything that came before had happened, but still, we have a new beginning for what he was going to do. Before we get to the Swamp Thing and the Watchmen, he had done this that storytelling technique with his Captain Britain work. He had killed Captain Britain, demolished him, and then had him built back again, like I said, atom by atom for our new beginning. By the time he got to America, he had done the same thing with Swamp Thing. In issue number 20, he had the character shot full of bullets and, ki and killed. At this time, Swamp Thing believed that he was actually scientist Alec Holland, human, who had been transformed into this plant creature due to a formula that he was working on, that he'd been exposed to and set on fire. Uh, Alan Moore with um, the great anatomy lesson after killing the character, brought it turned out that he had never died, and he revealed that the Swamp Thing is actually an elemental force on Earth, not the first one and uh you know we have a plant creature who had been imbued with the consciousness and memories and humanity of alec holland he had to let that go and stop chasing it chasing trying to be transformed back into a human and then we had dr manhattan who had been blown to pieces in a lab accident built himself back together Having over months and months building his body back together, much like how you build a watch. He was a watchmaker before his father made him go into nuclear physics and all that other stuff. You know, real world, but it's still comic book science. Around the early 2000s, I was at a comic book shop, comic book shop, comic book convention where I was actually sitting down outside, taking a break, and actually started talking comic books with some people over there. And uh, they brought up the fact that I had never put together, which surprised me, was that uh, Alan Moore had used the same plot, essentially, plot device, same setting, uh, for two books that came out a few months apart. Swamp Thing, this issue in particular, My Blue Heaven, number 56, came out in the fall of 1986, if I remember right. Or maybe it was this one. Maybe this came out in the fall of 86. And then the Swamp Thing issue came out in January of 87. But uh, it's my favorite way to see books written, not just in comics. It's the technique of having your character exposed to a situation. Basically put your characters through hell and seeing how they react. The story kind of forms on how they react. And I did not realize how well these two books complemented each other. You can actually read them back to back. And I often wonder, now that I'm, I know about this, is if um, having Swamp Thing build his body out of a blue plant with this blue world that he ends up landing on um, was a wink and a nod to Dr. Manhattan, letting you know that these, these stories complement each other. I might be reading it too much. But previously, what happened was is uh, Swamp Thing ended up storming and invading Gotham City, and a group of people had cut him off from the green. The green is the elemental force, the energy that gives Swamp Thing his power and binds him to the earth and all the plants, and he'd been cut off with uh, science from that green and he thrust himself out into the cosmos uh, and landed on another planet. Dr. Manhattan had been accused of causing the death of all his friends, all his comic book tropes, if you will, giving them cancer with his powers. And he was stormed by reporters and everybody was making accusations and he'd been losing his humanity. To begin with, he had evolved into a, a different creature who was no longer being human. 
So you have a plant man who knows what it means to be human and built his world and become a social creature and, and had the love of his life, Abby, taken from him. Where you have everybody trying to hold on to Dr. Manhattan for political reasons and out of love. But he was just not the same creature. He could see time happening all at once, past, present, and future. He already knew that things were laid out, predetermined, and planned. I mean, he was just a puppet on the string going along with it. Meanwhile, where he watched everyone die and everybody age, it meant nothing to him. He actually said that a live body and a dead body possess the same amount of atoms. So he exiled himself to Mars, a red planet, surrounded by the sands by himself. And he was actually happy there. Where Swamp Thing ends up on a blue planet full of greenery and bugs, a heavier gravity. He ends up exploring this world, but now he's a social creature. The creature that was never a human has those human needs, and the, per the character who was human uh, has lost it. He's just drifted away into a world of science, things he didn't need, a bean of logic. And the way that they complement each other is just amazing. He likes, Dr. Manhattan likes the solitude of it. He has come to reflect on his life, and he's telling us about who he was and what he is and how he came to be on Mars. Meanwhile, you have Swamp Thing spending weeks and months on a blue planet and ends up trying to trying to have companionship. He makes another creature much like himself. He sees through both eyes. Uh, he's facing himself. And if you've spent any time alone on an extended amount of time, um, you know that isolation will mess with you. So he ex explores this planet. He's trying to accept that he is here forever. This is where he lives, that Earth is gone, Abby is gone. He knows it's going to take him years to explore this planet. He knows nothing about it. And he ends up making Abby. He missed her. He made her out of plants. Makes a blue movie with her in reference and the theme in this Swamp Thing book is just amazing because we get a whole page of him talking about melancholy, putting together things in a very poetic stance of how the earth, this planet can be heavenly, a blue heaven. But he still needs that. He, he still has, in looking at this, it's, it's a study in the human condition, how he cannot be alone, how he misses Abby and he tries to recreate the world in his image. And he ends up building towns in Louisiana that he knows. And he goes quite mad because he's controlling all these creatures. All these creatures and all these pl plants are still him. And he ends up making John Constantine. And John Constantine, in my opinion, is the subconscious telling him, are you kidding? Are you joking? Is, you know, is your humanity not worth fighting for? This is all fake. Acid rains come down, destroy everything he has. And he goes quite mad ends up destroying all the uh, the the falsehoods in this purgatory that he made and decides uh, that humanity he's this, in order for him to live and not to go insane and have this perverted version of earth and the people that he knows he has to fight and he has to go back meanwhile with Dr. Manhattan he thinks of all the drama that comes with people all the pettiness all the neediness, all the political situations that are just illogical. You know, he's become a creature of science. He can see the quantum phys physics around him of the universe working. He sees a big picture. And he likes things to stand still. He's no longer interested. He's a, he's a god amongst bugs where Swamp Thing, the only other living creatures that were on his planet were actual bugs, beetles, that he saw his reflection in. And in his own right, Swamp Thing is also a god when you think about it. And sadly enough, what does the conclusion come where Swamp Thing decides what he had, the people that he loves, the emotions, 
everything that he had he wants back that he had to build and earn um dr manhattan goes the other way with it and decides these people i'm tired of being caught in the tangle of their lives and i'm gone gone to mars gone to a place without clocks without seasons without hourglasses to trap the shifting pink sand below me in the sand the secret shape of my creation is concealed buried in the sand's future so he ends up accepting that he's going to be on Mars. He's happy there. And when he builds a world, it is of the watch. It is exactly what he needs. This untouched red planet is exactly what he wants. It just amazes me how two characters in the same situation ends up being a study in you know, the human condition, social creatures, nature versus science logic a cold dead planet another one filled with still filled with life all connected with a blue theme the colors a blue man on a red planet a blue man on a blue planet he should fit in he shouldn't fit in but it's exactly what he wants alan moore whether he did this on purpose or not uh this is genius and reading these two issues back to back and doing a character study is just fantastic. Uh, it really, it really elevated both these books and both these stories. So uh, if you can, take the time to read them back to back, if you can find a way. All right. Be excellent to each other.